Well, uh, thanks a million, uh, Keith. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's just an absolute um, pleasure and a privilege to be here. And, uh, you know, I, I noticed the uh, talk, uh, the title that I was asked to give a, a few remarks about, and it was the power of partnership. And looking around the room and seeing many of my esteemed colleagues, I'm sure that you could all be up here uh, giving that uh, talk instead of me. And for uh, some of you who are just entering into this wonderful world of uh, community-engaged uh, creation of knowledge and dissemination of that knowledge, you'll find many, many of these esteemed colleagues ar around this room that are there to mentor you, to advise you, and just to walk the journey with you that I have found with uh, many of them. So um, I leave you with that as a few introductory remarks. Well. When one thinks about uh, the power of partnerships, really two things come to mind uh, initially. Is, is that um, I often fi find uh, the word partnership um, and the word research, or sometimes you know the big P and the big R. A lot of times, people um, find these in some ways very exciting and very kind of awe-inspiring. And yet, at the same time, the word partnership, um, sometimes we question whether we're able to um, be good partners, know what a good partner is, how do we build partners, how do we sustain them, and then what's this whole area of research? And so, I have, over the last few years, I've started to change my vocabulary a bit, to be honest with you. I very seldom use the term research uh, when I'm out with, um, with my good colleagues. I talk about discovering. I talk about uh, creating knowledge and information that's going to make a difference. And so I'm increasingly finding myself trying to use a language and words that um, many people can walk in those shoes and many people feel I can do that. And the same with partnerships. I try to, um, as some of you who would know me a little bit more, I try not to ever say to someone, you're my good partner, but rather I start to say, you're my good buddy. So I have lots of buddies, and again, a buddy is, uh, my, that's my way of saying, uh, that's my term of endearment, that's my um, that's my informal, that's my gentle, that's my way of acknowledging how important uh, I feel you in my life. And in doing that also is, is that I want to um, help people understand that maybe traditionally, and in some parts in, in universities, the tradition is still very prominent. But I often think is, is that it's about time that we learn that we are not the sole gatekeepers of knowledge. And we are only one of those contributors to the discovery mission. And I guess I've been um, pretty blessed is how I learned to be a good buddy or to be a good partner actually began um, in my early childhood. If one can think about what a partner does, or what one thinks of a good buddy uh, does, well, I had the distinct uh, pleasure of growing up in a family of 13. So I have six brothers and I have six sisters, and we are all one year apart. And so the age gap is very quite close. And so the term partnership uh, almost became a, a, a term or a way of surviving in a family of 13. <laughs> so I knew um, as a you know, young um, girl, if I wanted maybe to get extra dibs at the supper table, I knew who in the family, who I needed to partner with to give me the, that knowledge. As I got older and I had to navigate the whole dating scene, I knew which one of my brothers and sisters would help me again travel that journey, what were the tips of the trade, so to speak. When um, I was um, my teenage years and I would get in the odd bit of trouble, I know, knew who to partner with in my family 
to let me know um, what, uh, what wiggle room I had, um, what, how tight was the rope going to be um, when I surfaced in the morning or how I was going to get myself out of things. So again is for me, um, partnerships or working uh, with others, it's about knowing who has some knowledge, who has another skill or an ability or a quality or a characteristic that can help you navigate the journey that you and they want to go on. It's also to know who has that shared vision of wanting to make a difference. And that's what a partner uh, is all about. For me, it's a mindset and it's also a way of being. After I um, uh, left home and came to uh, university, um, I knew that the one thing that I always wanted to be um, was a teacher. I thought I wanted to be a teacher because I felt that I could make a difference. And so in my um, uh, early years after I graduated, I, I received a Bachelor of Science and then a Bachelor of Education. I became a science and a health teacher uh, in Calgary for the uh, uh, school board, the separate school board. And I happened to be placed as a, as a, a newly uh, gra uh, graduating uh, student in a very affluent area of Calgary. And I was surrounded um, by uh, the brand new schools, the brand new technology, um, the, every field trip, everything that went on um, was um, to the nth degree. And I remember one day I got a phone call from the superintendent wanting to take me out for breakfast. And it's sort of like when you're called to the principal's office, you automatically do not think that this is necessarily a good thing. And so I went with great trepidation to that breakfast meeting. And at that breakfast meeting, the superintendent said to me, Karen, I have a great opportunity for you. He is I want to move you from where you have been the last years, and I want to move you into the inner core of Calgary, and I want you to um, split your time between these four um, schools in the core neighborhoods of the downtown area of Calgary. Well, um, at first, um, I was trying to understand how this was a great opportunity uh, for me. And again, as, as a, uh, you know, a young uh, teacher. Um, but nevertheless, um, again, um, good solid background, I smiled and I said, I think that would be the best thing ever for me. And we shook hands and within a period of two weeks, I uh, was now transformed into my new position. And so there I was, um, and uh, I think that was probably one of the turning points uh, in my life. It taught me um, how much I didn't know, but it taught me um, how much everyone else knew. It taught me my other colleagues, the teachers. It taught me, uh, it taught me about um, uh, Sam, who ran the 7-Eleven down the street. It taught me uh, to me in, in terms of the equivalent of... Um, uh, great places like uh, EGADs in terms of in Calgary. So I learned from so many other people um, in the neighborhood. And that's when I decided that after uh, being there for five years, again, I thought, this is home for me. But I knew that I needed to learn more uh, to be able to help um, the young students and to be able to help uh, my colleagues. And so I decided to go back to school, and uh, I went to the University of Victoria. And one of the things that when I went to Victoria, I was asked um, on the side um, if I would supervise student teachers that were out in the field. And when I was supervising the student teachers, um, and also because of my experience at it, uh, um, as a young teacher, I started to find that a lot of what was happening 
um, was how um, self-esteem and self-confidence was really tied in um, to the way our young people uh, thought of themselves and influenced their behaviors. And in particular, I was really concerned for our young females, our young women, and uh, how much their self-esteem and self-confidence was tied into their appearance. And so then, as a new graduate student, I decided, well, that was how I was going to make a difference. I was going to explore the whole area of self-esteem and self-confidence of young people, but I was going to do that um, through uh, understanding more about the body, more about one's physical uh, appearance. So I embarked upon an area of study um, of physiology. And because I wanted to understand uh, how the mind and the body uh, connected, but I needed to learn more about, the, uh, about one's um, biology and one's physiology. So I found myself very quickly in some classes and uh, my area of study. Um, I began with rats. So I was looking at um, the rat model in terms of um, nutrition, in terms of obesity, in terms of malnutrition, um, etc. But then after I made some major breakthroughs um, in terms of the rat model, I thought, well, I'll go figure that. How's that going to help me? Remember, I still had my overall vision. So rats, then I transformed my knowledge from rats uh, to humans. And then I started to, again, make more gains of that. I, my grants and my, you know, my translation of that knowledge into the community in terms of, but primarily in the peer-to-peer -peer community. And then when I started to understand more about the biology and physiology, I understood that that was only one piece of the jigsaw puzzle. That if I was going to be able to really understand this, I needed to then surround myself with partners or good buddies from other disciplines. So my good buddies from psychology, from sociology, from education, from epidemiology, and so they became part of my team to help me. But then slowly I started to understand, well, if I'm going to be a good partner, and I often uh, think about a good partner as one, it's about the gives and the gets, all right? It's about walking in each other's shoes. And I thought a lot of times they were sort of carrying me um, and that um, I, I wasn't really walking in their shoes. I allowed them to walk in theirs and me to walk in mine. But we walked holding hands, though, so I thought that was pretty good. But then I decided I wanted to actually, you know, be part of their shoes. And so trained in my graduate work as more in terms of quantitative research, so I knew in terms of any kind of statistics uh, that, that you needed to know, I knew them. But I knew far less um, about qualitative methodology. I knew far less about photo voice. I knew far less about telling stories. I knew far less about um, translating my knowledge into usable forms um, in the community. And so then I became um, um, quite adept at uh, learning. Uh, another whole uh, methodology. But then I was still working with my buddies, all right, my other academic uh, buddies. So it was time then to complete the jigsaw puzzle, and it was time for me to really, truly <coughs> understand the power of partnerships that, that uh, really grounded me as a young uh, child and as a, as a young person in my first career as a high school teacher. And so then I switched in terms of I still um, had my multidisciplinary team. But then um, I began to populate uh, the team with all those people that I thought were important uh, to help me uh, see things through a different lens, to help bring the knowledge that I knew only they could help bring the knowledge. So I extended parts of the team to school administrators. Uh, to teachers, 
um, to people who ran, as I said, uh, the 7-Elevens, the grocery stores. It was also people in the health region. It was city programmers and planners. It was people like the Council on Aging. We even had one study that um, it was with the city police, because certainly the city police they travel um, a different roads and different journeys that I had <coughs> not traveled or don't travel um, a, at certain times of the day or the night. So they could only bring me a certain knowledge. They could only bring to the literature, um, to a diverse, diverse audience, that kind of knowledge that I could never bring. So it was there then that I discovered the power of partnerships was I am only one small, small piece. And for me to make a difference was not only to reach out across the disciplines within um, um, an academic setting, but again, we are only one small piece. And it's really the community um, that, in my mind, is more so um, the gatekeepers of that knowledge. They're the ones that help open those many doors, those many gates, and they help translate that knowledge into ways that some of us may are not able to do. But we also learn um, by traveling in their shoes um, how to do that. And so in terms of for me, when I talk about the power of partnerships, I'm very sensitive um, to the language that I use, um, not only the language that I use uh, out in the community, but, uh, but amongst my community um, within um, the University of Saskatchewan. And so if I can ever leave you with a few little tips of the trade, I guess, um, it's to think about the words and the language that we use. It's about knowing that we are only one small uh, component, only one of those gatekeepers of knowledge, that if we're truly going to make difference is we'll only be able to make a difference if we have our good buddies by our side co-creating the knowledge right at the very beginning, incubating that idea, understanding what it is that we are trying to do, what are we trying to make a difference in, who, when, what, and why. So again, thank you very much for the opportunity. I find through my journey um, of always uh, being a, one who is engaged with both my internal and my external community. You know, I think I'm a much better person. You know, when I think back of all that's informed me, I really do. I think I'm a much nicer person to hang around with. I think I'm a much nicer person uh, to do work with. And I think it's because all of those people touched many parts of my life and taught me skills and qualities that um, one does not simply get um, all the time through our traditional means of knowledge sharing and creation. So thank you, my good buddies. Um, I wish you all well as you <coughs> create and you discover um, with your good buddies and uh, with the broader uh, people that into your lives. So thank you very much for the opportunity.